What's up creators? So I'm sitting here doing a personal project and I came up with a cool tip for you guys for Substance Painter. Um, so I'm working on this character. Uh, this is the concept art it's based on. I found it online. Thought it was pretty cool. So I'm sitting here just grabbing some of these default metal materials that Substance comes with and I'm just kind of bored of them, you know? So I'm going to show you guys how to make your own smart material. So my goal is to make a metal with scratched edges, with rust spots, and some dirt and grunge. So I went over here to Production Crate and in the graphics category under textures, in the grunge category, I just grabbed a few different um, concretes and dirts and rocks and rust. Uh, you might be wondering why did I grab those and not pictures of metal? You can make metal out of a lot of different things and I actually like to use pictures of concrete a lot for metal rather than pictures of metal because there's cool shades in it, cool colors and hues. Too many people just make metal that's just gray, just shades of gray and like cloudy, scratched gray images. But if you add a little bit of color to it, it adds a lot of visual interest, a lot of subtle visual interest. So I downloaded those and I ended up using these five textures. Notice I did rename them. Substance Painter has this weird quirk where if there's a four digit number at the end of your file, it thinks it's part of a UDIM. I just recommend getting rid of the little resolution number at the end of the file. So these are my five textures I'm gonna use. So over here in my project, I'm gonna make a metal material for all this armor. So I'm gonna create a new fill layer right here, and I'm gonna call this base metal. Down here in the properties, we've got base color, height, roughness, metallic, and all that good stuff. You can just sort of edit this directly if you want to. Maybe I'll crank up the metalness because that's what we're going for. And you can see you very quickly get a really nice stylized metal, but I want to go a little more realistic. So let's import our textures and start dropping them in. Over here in the assets palette, in the bottom right, you can import resources. I'm going to add resources and here's my five textures. Let's just go ahead and import those. And it doesn't know what they are. See, it says unidentified. So let's just highlight them and say these are textures. And then down here where it says import your resources to, you could do just the current session if you don't need them after you close the program. You could do uh, attach it to your project if you want it to follow your project around to different computers, or you could add it to your library so it's a permanent part of your asset library. I'm just gonna choose current session for this one. Okay, and here's all of our textures. So we can just start with the first one. Let's drag and drop this onto base color. And I can see it already looks a little more interesting. Doesn't necessarily look better yet, but we can make some adjustments here. First thing is I want to change the tiling settings because maybe this texture is too big or too small. So here in the properties under scale, I can increase it to make it tile more or I can decrease it to zoom in. You'll notice that it starts to tile pretty noticeably if you go too small. So I'm going to switch my projection method right here from UV projection to triplanar. It gives you a little bit more randomness, but I'm still going to zoom out a bit so we don't see the repeating pattern too much. Okay, the next thing I want to do is lower the contrast. Metal is a very low contrast uh, material. So the difference between the dark spots and the light spots is way too big. Under here on my base metal, I'm going to add an adjustment. I'm going to choose add levels. And right here, you should see a histogram. You should be familiar with this if you know Photoshop or, or After Effects or anything like that. And these bottom two are contrast. I'll just bring those together. If you bring them closer together on the left side, you're going to get a darker metal. And on the right side, you're going to get a lighter metal. So let's just do this. And you can also adjust these sliders up here if you want to fine tune it a little bit. We're just going to get kind of an interesting look. Perfect. Okay, next thing I want to adjust is uh, the roughness channel. The roughness channel is your most artistic channel where you have most freedom. Let's say you're trying to make a gold material, like a gold bar. Gold is just the color it is. And obviously if you're making gold, then the metallic slider has to be all the way up. You don't really have a choice. But with roughness, you can tell the story. Is it fresh out of the mint? Is it shiny? Or are there fingerprints on it? Is it scratched? So that's where the roughness channel comes in. I'm gonna grab the exact same texture and drop it into roughness right here. Perfect, you can already see it starts to look a little bit more grungy. The reason I use the exact same texture is so that these little spots of roughness line up perfectly with the color map I already dropped in. Now it looks a little bit too high contrast. Again, it's too shiny in the shiny areas and too rough in the rough areas. So let's add another levels adjustment. And if I look here where it says affected channel, I can switch that to roughness and bring the contrast down. Now roughness is interesting. The darker it is, the more shiny it is. So if you want a really shiny metal, bring them close together here on the left side. If you want a less shiny metal, bring them a little bit farther to the right like that. If you want to increase the contrast between the shiny parts and the rough parts, you just bring these apart. And you can also play around with these other sliders like before. If you want to view the roughness channel directly, you can go up here to the right and switch to roughness and you can see the map. Remember that the dark parts are more shiny and the light parts are less shiny. I'm gonna press M for material and that looks pretty good. 
Now let's drop the same texture into the height channel so we can get some more uh, bump uh, imperfections and variations. Quick note before I do that though, take a look how the height channel is different from the other channels. See how the metallic channel goes from black to white, or if I look at the numbers, it goes from zero to one. The height channel is different. Zero is in the middle and it goes up to positive one and down to negative one. And that allows you to have bumps that go in and bumps that go out. But I'm gonna start at zero and let's drop that same texture into the height channel like this. Now it looks crazy, it looks like mud. That's because the contrast between the deepest parts and the, and the highest parts is way too high. So just like with the roughness, we wanna bring the contrast together. We wanna bring the, the highest and the lowest points as close together as possible. And we wanna keep them near the zero range, so near black. So I'm gonna add a levels adjustment and switch it to the height channel right there. And I'm gonna bring this way down almost to zero so that these two numbers are very close to zero. You already see it looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to bring the gamma, which is this middle one, up. And what that's gonna do is sort of flatten out the surface, but leave the deepest little pits. So we get a material that looks like it was once perfectly smooth when it was first created, and then these little pits started getting uh, taken out of it. Now at this point, we could actually experiment with dropping in our different textures. If I go back to base metal, notice I have these three channels with the same image dropped in. I can just switch to the next one. So let's drop grunge two in there and see what happens into all three of them. And that's pretty cool. Now you can see grunge one and grunge two over here. They have different uh, values. One of them's lighter than the other. So you can still make adjustments if you need to. Let's say I want to darken this down. Let's go to our levels, uh, base color levels, and just darken it down. It's not too bad. Let's try the third one. So I'm just dropping in grunge three. I actually like this one a lot. If I go back to my base color, I'm just going to brighten that back up a little bit kind of increase the contrast for some more visual variation. I'm also gonna add a saturation node. I wanna bring up the saturation to get more of those colors in there. So it's not just gray. So I'm gonna click on my base metal, let's add a filter. And this is a blank filter, there's nothing in it yet. But if I click here, I can search for hue, or if you don't see that anything pop up, you can search for HSL, which is short for hue, saturation, and lightness. So I'll click that on. I'm just gonna increase the saturation. Uh, you can go all the way up just to see what colors are there. It's actually kind of like, a rainbowy effect, which is kind of cool. But let's turn that back down just a little bit. If you press the C key, you can cycle through all of your maps. And if I look right here, I can see there's my base color and there's some blues, some green, some red. It's very subtle, it's very low contrast, but it does help make the metal look more convincing. I'll press M to go back to my material. And the next step is I want to create a layer for the edges. I want to bring out some scratches and uh, a worn down effect on all the edges of this metal. So to create this metal edges, I'm gonna grab my base metal and duplicate it, and I'll rename the new one Metal Edges. So now all I have to do is make um, a lighter version and also a shinier version. I'm just gonna go into my base color and lighten it up. It's gonna lighten up the entire thing, but remember, we're gonna, we're gonna isolate it to just the edges of the model in just a minute here. I'm also gonna go to roughness and make it a little bit shinier, so it looks like they've been polished. So let's just lower my roughness value. Now we actually have two metals that are almost identical, but one's just uh, brighter and shinier. And if I hide it, you can see it reveals the original metal underneath. What we need to do is create a mask for the layers. So I'm gonna click on metal edges and right here and add a black mask. And this is a mask just like in Photoshop, if you're familiar with that. We have our layer and right next to it is the mask, which is just a black and white image that reveals the, the layer. We could create a custom mask, but Substance actually has some pretty cool pre-made ones. So let's just Go over here to this little category. This is your smart masks. And I'm gonna search for edge. There's one called edge scratches. That sounds promising. Let's drag and drop that onto my mask. And you should have seen a, a change, but if you missed it, you can always alt click on your mask to reveal the black and white image that's driving it. Let's make some adjustments here. What I wanna do is get rid of some of these scratches. I think there's too many in the middle of the plate, but I wanna reveal the edges of each object. So if I click on my mask and then click here on metal edge wear, this is called a generator. It's what's creating the image. I can increase the wear level. And you can see the difference it makes. I can also adjust maybe the grunge amount. Let's turn that down. And now it's focusing more on the edges, which is what I'm looking for. So let's increase the wear level, but also increase the contrast to sort of tighten it up and keep it towards the edges. We're creating a very stylized effect here. If I press M for material, I can see the result, hopefully. You can also press C to cycle through your maps and we can see the color. It's a little bit lighter around the edges. If I keep pressing C, here's the roughness. You can see it's darker on the edges, which means it's shinier. Press M for material. All right, so we got our edges done. Let's do rust and then dirt and then we're all finished. So I'm gonna create a new fill layer above my metal edges, call it rust. And I'm gonna go back to my textures here. You can actually search for whatever you named your texture. I named mine P-Crate Grunge. So I'll just search for P-Crate. 
and it comes right back up. So this is a fairly good looking rust material. It's maybe a little too yellow. I want to adjust it to be more red, but it's basically what I'm looking for. So let's drop this into the color and you can see it's not quite right yet. We got to make some changes. Let's increase the scale so it's smaller. Let's also switch to triplanar projection, just like we did on the metal. And before I do anything else, I'm going to adjust the color, make it more red like rust. If I click on the rust layer and add a filter and then click here in the filter category, I'm going to search for gradient. Gradient's cool. It makes the image black and white and we can remap it to whatever colors we want. So the darkest colors, let's choose a nice dark red. The mid tones, let's choose a little bit lighter red, maybe kind of orangey. And then the highlights, I'm going to do another shade of orange. Don't worry that it looks shiny at this point. We're going to make some changes. So just choose a nice two or three different nice rust colors. Back to our layer. Now rust is very not shiny. It's very rough. So I'm going to crank the roughness almost all the way up to one. If we want to add some dimension to the rust, we can plug it into the height channel as well. But notice it gets a little too crazy. So we're going to bring the contrast back together. So on this rust layer, I'm going to add a levels, switch to height, and then bring the contrast together near zero. Just We want just a little bit of bump on there. I think I'm going to crank up the scale as well, just to make the chunks even a little smaller. Pretty good. Don't worry if you see too much tiling pattern because we're going to hide most of this rust. So if you start to see like a grid pattern, it's not a big deal. Pretty nice looking rust. Let's add a mask to it. So I'm going to add a black mask, just like before. I'm going to go to my smart materials and they have a really good rust mask here. I just search for rust. There's one called rust drips. So I'll drop that onto my rust mask. And you can see it actually looks pretty good right out of the box. I might leave it how it is, but let me show you how to adjust it if you want to adjust it. Click on your generator, just like before. And there's a bunch of sliders here for drips and spreading. So if I turn down the spreading, you can see what happens. So there's these little rust spots and they drip downward and then they can spread out from there. So we can adjust all that stuff. I can adjust the drip intensity and that will make it sort of go back up. I can adjust the smoothness and then the spread outward. So I don't want to go too crazy with this. I just want a few little rusty spots. Okay, last step is I'm going to add some dirt. So dirt goes on top of rust because it usually gets on the surface last, right? Let's actually duplicate the rust layer and just turn it brown so it's more dirt-like. So I'm going to grab my rust layer, control D, I'll name it dirt. If I click on the layer, then go into my gradient from before, I can adjust these colors to be more brown, maybe a little less saturated. And now we just have to change the mask out so it's not dripping like the rust. So if I click on the dirt mask right here, here's the generator, just press this little X, that'll get rid of it. And now I can search my smart masks for dirt. So the one that I like is called Dirt Leak. I'm gonna drag and drop that onto my dirt mask. And you can see what it did is it sort of crowded around the base of all this stuff, which is really cool. This is why we call it a smart material because it respects the actual geometry of your object. You don't have to decide by hand where to paint it if you don't want to. So if I alt click, you can see that's where the dirt is accumulating, sort of in the deep recesses, around the base of things, because they get touched less, which is really cool. So that's it, that's the material, but now how do we make it into a smart material that we can reuse on the rest of the model? It's really simple. I'm gonna add a folder, this little folder right here, and I'll call this boar armor, because my character's a boar, you can call it whatever you want. And I'll grab my four layers here, and drop them into the bore armor folder. You can see right there, I have a folder and all that stuff we did is inside of it. I can right click on the folder and go create smart material. So if you go into your smart materials library, you should see the bore material or whatever it is that you created. And you can actually just drag and drop this onto the other pieces right here. Be sure to like this video to make it load faster. And what's really cool is you'll notice that it will respect the new geometry. So if I for example, press C for color and cycle through my maps, you can see that it's picking out the edges of this object. So it's not based on the object that you created. All the dirt is landing in the deep recesses of this object now. If I scroll down to here, you can see that these edges are now standing out. So it's a really, really powerful technique. You can just create the material once and then use it all over the place. So hopefully that saves you guys a bunch of time. Hopefully that makes your projects uh, stand out from the crowd so you're not just using the same materials that everyone else is using. Whatever you create with this technique, be sure to show us on Instagram by tagging us there, uh, post it on Discord, post it in the comments, and uh, whatever you make, make it awesome.